This is video number five for sections 4.1 and 4.2, scientific notation. Uh, this is just one last tag-on topic for this lesson. We're not going to make a huge deal of this. Scientific notation comes up primarily in science when you're dealing with either really, really big or really, really tiny numbers. And you're just looking for a way to write those numbers a little easier. To be in scientific notation means looking like this. A number times 10 raised to some power. The number at the front there has to be between 1 and 10, and the power has to be an integer, meaning no fractions allowed. Okay, so here's an example, a really, really big number, 36 million. What's the scientific notation way of writing it? Well, you can see it right here. Where did that come from? The idea is you look at your really big number and you figure out where the decimal point would have to be so that you would have a number between 1 and 10. That number at the front has to be between 1 and 10. And of course, the place you'd have to stick it is right here because 3.6 is bigger than 1 but smaller than 10. That's where the 3.6 came from. Then you just have to figure out how many spaces you would need to move the decimal point to put it back to where it was. It used to be down here at the end. And if you count along here, you get seven spaces to move it to the end. Well, remember in math, multiplying by 10, multiplying a decimal number times 10, uh, moves the decimal point to the right. And so if we just multiply by 10 seven times, we'll be back to where we should have been. That's what this is saying. Take 3.6 and multiply it by seven tens. Scientific notation, a shorter way of writing 36 million. Here's another example for a tiny, tiny number. Okay, 0. 0. 0.00003. There's got to be some better way of writing this without all those zeros. Well, that's where scientific notation comes in. Again, you can see the answer here. You're always looking, where would I have to put the decimal point so I end up with a number between 1 and 10? It would have to go right at the end here this time because that would be the number 3, and 3 is between 1 and 10, hence the 3 at the front. And then this time I would have to move the decimal point to the left a certain number of spaces. Uh, if you count, I believe it comes out five spaces to put it back where it was. How do you move the decimal point to the left? You divide by five ten times, okay? Meaning something like this. Take the number three and divide it by the number ten five times. The thing is, though, I want my scientific notation to always look exactly like this. So what's happened here is someone has reciprocated the base, the 10, which allowed them then to change the sign of the exponent from a positive to a negative. Now, that's backwards of what we were doing during the lesson. We said, well, we don't want any negative exponents. But in scientific notation, you do use negative exponents because every answer has to look exactly like this. The bottom line is, when you're dealing with really, really big numbers, your exponent is going to be positive. When you're dealing with really, really tiny numbers, your exponent is negative. You might try these couple of examples yourself uh, and then come back to the video. In the first example, I would have to put the decimal point right here in order to get a number between 1 and 10. That number would be 2.45. And then I, it's always times 10 to the something. I'd be moving the decimal point to the right. How many places? I believe if you count it out, you get eight spaces to the right. And so there's the scientific notation answer. For the other one, the decimal point would have to go here to get a number between 1 and 10. That's 3.4. This time I'm going to have a negative exponent because I'm moving the decimal to the left. It's like dividing by 10. How many places? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. So times 10 to the negative 4. I want to show you then how you can deal with scientific notation on your calculator. It's kind of funny looking on the TI. You have to use this button called EE. So let me take you there and show you what it looks like. So I'm on the main screen of the calculator. The EE button is right here above the comma in blue. So I'll have to hit the blue button to access it. If you want to type 3.6 times 10 to the 7th, what you do is you type the 3.6, 
and then you choose that EE so hit the blue button and choose EE on the screen a single E appears and then you hit 7 and that if you hit enter you're gonna get that 36 million uh, that we had before but this is the calculators way of showing 3.6 times 10 to the 7th of course on paper you never write this you use the actual scientific notation Okay, take a look at the final problem there on the handout. It says take your calculator and enter 2 to the 40th. So 2, the exponent button on your calculator is right here, this little caret thing, to the 40. Uh, this calculator actually makes it look like an exponent. If you have an older one, it'll just leave the, the caret symbol on the screen. And then if you hit enter, of course you get some funny looking thing. Now we're trying to make sense of this. Obviously 2 to the 40th, that's got to be a giant number. It's got to be way bigger than 1. Well look at the edge down here. See that E? They're telling you this is in scientific notation. Let's copy this down on the paper and we'll try to make sense of it. Okay, so here's what we had on the screen. Uh, again, nobody ever writes this on paper. On paper you would have to write it using correct scientific notation. It's almost identical as this, it's just that in place of that e, you would do times 10 to the 12th power. That's what the calculator is trying to communicate to you. In other words, it would look like this. And then uh, if you wanted to write that as a regular number, what you'd have to do is you'd have to move the decimal point 12 places to the right, since it's a positive exponent. I think we're going to run out of spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For the final three spaces, I'm going to have to fill in some zeros. But here's what I get. The calculator didn't even have enough digits for me to fill in the end here, so I'll just have to keep the zeros. This is a pretty giant number. I believe this is 1,099,511,628,000. Uh, that's the kind of number we would expect, of course, from 2 to the 40th. As I said, we're not going to make a big deal of scientific notation. You'll see it a little on the homework. Mostly we just have it in the course uh, so that you're ready should you see it in a future science class.